The birth rate statistics. The baby booties company want to know the birth expectancy for the coming year. During 1936, two million two hundred and forty-three babies were born in forty-six states. The returns aren't in yet from Maine and Vermont. Thanks, Oliver. I don't know what I'd ever do without you. You, uh, you'll have to work again tonight, Jenkins. Maxwell Company is having a director's meeting tomorrow morning. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> that does it. Exactly 28,973. What? Beans. I'm competing in a bean contest. Out of 230,000 cowboy heroes who have been pursued, 230,000 have escaped. All right, all right, thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this theater is happy to announce the winner of the Bean Guessing Contest. The lucky winner of the $1,500 prize is Mr. Oliver Boggs. Is Mr. Oliver Boggs in the theater, please? Present. Will you come right up? Mm. Quiet. Uh, Mr. Boggs, have you any way of identifying yourself? No. Nothing but my birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that'll be all right. There you are, with our best sincere wishes. Thank you. Mr. Boggs guessed within three beans of the exact number, ladies and gentlemen. Are you sure about that? It's not like me to make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what are you taking that for? I'm going to count them. <laughs> Won it, all right. You did? How much? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred? Listen, Oliver, I want to talk to you. You've got $1,500. That's a lot of money. You can afford to quit this job. Yeah, but who'll help you? What'll you do without me? That doesn't matter now, as long as you get out of here. You're young, you've got everything before you. Life, adventure, romance. Romance. There are three romantic languages that comprise over 330,000 words. In most of these... Statistics the again. Now you listen to me. Look at me. Take a good look at me. Well, I, I've been seeing you for the last ten years. You look just the same to me, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, that's just it. Nothing around here ever changes. This is the time for you to use your head besides storing facts. Do something on your own. Become the man I've always wanted to be. I will someday. Someday. Someday will never come. That's what I used to say. Now is the time. Right now. Get back to work, Jenkins. You're lucky to have a job. If I catch you loafing again, you're through. Mr. Fry. Do you know that so far this year, 1,682,704 people have quit work of their own volition? Is that so? <laughs> well, young man, what has that got to do with me? I'm going to make it 1,682,705. What? Goodbye, Mr. Jenkins.
Oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. I, I didn't see you. Well, I hope you do the next time. I'd like to very much. You're beautiful. Uh, are you married? No. I mean, it's none of your business. Oh, uh, but it is my business. What? Do you realize, according to the most recent census, only 60% of those who've attained marriageable age are married? I'm not interested. And the remaining 40%... Must you follow me? Oh, I'm sorry. There was no one else to ask. Ask what? Where I can find the, the Peckham Falls Cooperage. You know, where they make barrels. Do I look like I'd know where they made barrels? No. All right. I, I suppose that sign is accurate. Well, uh, what makes you think it ain't? I didn't think it wasn't. I was simply confronting the possibility that it might not be. Hmm. You talk a lot of words without saying anything. The English language contains more than 455,000 words. Well, 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 what of it? Nothing in particular. Uh, then why fetch it up? Don't it stay long? Uh, permanently. For good? Here? I uh, contemplate purchasing the local barrel words. Why? When I uh, discovered this advertisement, I considered it an arrow of destiny. Well, it ain't any of my business, but seeing you were so set on the cooperage, I guess I might as well run you into town. Twenty-five cents and a sight easier in walking. Better bring your police. You know, we've got to see Oleander Tubbs. She's been running this cooperage ever since old man Petty died. Come on. Guess Oleander's out back. And you better scrape up on your manners because this here is your new boss. Boss? Well, he will be as soon as he buys out Mrs. Petty. Boss. Hmm. <coughs> oh, you have a cold. The ape can catch a cold from a human and vice versa. Who's an ape? Uh, I was merely stating a fact, Miss... Uh, uh, what's your name, little girl? Little girl? I suppose you like fat women. No. <laughs> when we go fishing, we throw them back bigger than you. You clear here, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. It's for you. You better step up to the office. Well, since you're so fond of facts, I'll give you. This business makes about eleven dollars a week. My salary is ten. That leaves one for you. You know, you ought to do nicely on that. Well, uh, why doesn't the business earn more? Because nobody in Peckham Falls is using any barrels. Even if they did, they couldn't pay for them. Trying to stop a sale, huh? Uh, You're fired. Again? Again. That is, as soon as I sell this place to the young man. Uh, Adna Katz tells me you want to buy. Is that correct? I was just looking around. Uh, Good. Five hundred dollars sold. That includes everything? Lock, stock and barrels. I take four. Only I've got to feed my cats. Did you know Americans spend more than one million dollars daily just to feed household pets? You know, I read that, but I didn't believe it. Oh, it's a fact. It's a deal, then. Five hundred. Well... I'm not versed in the business of making barrels, but doubtless I can master it. I accept your proposition. Take this down, Oleander. It's got to read legal. I have sold my barrel business to this young man here for $500, and he can hire Oleander Tubbs like my husband used to if he wants to, but it's none of my business. Do you want to? Oh, well. But I don't want to. I quit. The key's on the nail, but the lock don't work. It's a brand new legal tender. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you'll find my husband's fishing pole in the closet. I never owned anything before. I find myself quite elated. I, I think I shall start operations at once. Well, good luck to you. Do you mind if I don't stay around and watch? Oh, I wish you wouldn't quit. 
I mean to say I haven't the least idea how to run this business. You'll find out. Well, how can I without your help? Joe, so you've got your cheek asking me. I'd saved $287 to buy this barrel business for myself. And you bought it right out from under my nose. I didn't know that. Well, you know it now. I'm sorry. Have an apple? Well, I'd rather have a banana. Who are you? And why? I'm Oliver Boggs. And I wanted to buy a barrel factory, and this was the only one for sale. Well, if you stay here long enough, you'll be wearing one. <laughs> I wanted to see something of life. To be somebody. To find excitement and romance. And so you land in Peckham Falls. Well, you'll find about as much excitement here as in any oyster bed. Oh, you're wrong there. I met a most beautiful girl today. She knocked me down. Well, you shouldn't go making passes at strangers. Hmm? Now, who was she? Well, she didn't say. She was very blonde, attractive, and drove an expensive car. Oh, I know the girl. Irene Lee. Well, you're going to have to practice up a bit if you tackle her. She's like a persimmon, nice to look at, but puckery to the taste. She didn't impress me that way. Miss Lee informed me that she wasn't married. Neither am I. I'm not surprised. What do you mean? Well, statistics reveal that 70% of women employed in offices are not married. Yeah, that settles it. I'm going to stay. You need someone to look after you. Oh, that's fine. Uh, about staying, I mean. I feel that with your assistance, I'll be able to cope with anything. Oh, sure. We'll hang out a sign. Hot and cold coping down at all hours. <laughs> Look, suppose you dig up another st st statistic. statistic that shows how we're going to pay last month's rent. As bad as that? Worse. See, this town's always depended for its existence on just one thing. Old Morton Ross's canning and pickling works. When he ran full blast, Peckham Falls was prosperous. But lately, well, see for yourself. You mean that Mr. Ross's pickle factory has affected my business? Oh, in words of one syllable, yes. He was your best and practically your only customer. I shall call upon Mr. Ross at once. It is imperative that he keep running full blast. It's as simple as that. Why not? Well, try it. My puddle jump is parked in the rear. It's a, it's a big house about two miles out on the state road. You can't miss it. Uh, if anyone calls, I shall be back presently. You're all in one piece, I hope. Say, miss as many things as you can. Oh, I'm an excellent driver. I took a correspondence course. You know, you can't go on running it at last forever, Mr. Ross. I grew up with that factory. It means a lot to the town and to me. Yes, we have good reason to believe that uh, it's merely sentiment that's kept the place open. What would the Mammoth Packing Company do with my place if they did buy it? Hmm. Use it as a distribution point, I suppose. gentlemen realize how many lives have been lost by carelessness such as this? No, and I don't care. Who are you and what do you want? More than 1,100,000 accidents occur on the highway each year. I'll have to go into town, sir, and get a tow car. Okay. And make it snappy. I hope he does. 17% of all accidents are caused by mechanical deficiencies such as this. So what? Nothing. I was merely stating a fact. Hmm. You seem to be full of facts. Oh, <laughs> you've heard of me. Say, uh, would you mind giving us a lift? Mm, not at all. That is, if you don't mind being a little crowded. It's not the most modern car in the world. The rumble seat doesn't rumble. But, uh, just hold it until I get it started. around here, aren't you? Nope. 
newcomer is a better word. I arrived only today, and in the nick of time. What Peckham Falls needs is a blood transfusion. And you are to be the uh, donor? Yes. By observation, I can see that this town, like many other towns, is suffering from industrial anemia. And what specifically would you propose? In this case, the remedy is very simple. When a town depends upon one man for its livelihood, and that man is a tyrant who refuses to cooperate, steps must be taken, and I shall take them. Who is this tyrant you talk about? Morton P. Roth. Ah, he'll be very glad to hear all this. He shall, and from me. In matters of this kind, force should be met with force. I agree with you. Turn into this next driveway. I'll try it. This is the first time I ever drove a car. I assume you gentlemen are going to see Mr. Ross, too. <laughs> I am Mr. Ross. Uh, hello. Did you forget that Mr. Andrews and I were to play tennis this afternoon? Huh, tennis? I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Lee. The car broke down. Mr. Andrews came down here to talk business with me. Not to entertain you, young lady. Oh, your old business will keep Uncle Marty? I, I guess you won't want to see me just now. I'll come back again. Are you still here? Yes. Now get out before I have you thrown out. Yes, sir. Here, young man. Your trouble. Well, come on. Let's get going. trying. It's only open Saturdays. Uh, what do people do about haircuts? They don't. After you've been here a while, you won't either. I ought to know. I'm the barber. Isn't business very good? Well, to be optimistic, it's even worse. There just ain't no business, and what there is is on credit. That's why I only open Saturdays. I get tired of potatoes. Potatoes? Spuds. They pay for haircuts with vegetables. Personally, I'm a meat eater. Well, goodbye. I'll see you again. What for? The name is Oleander Tubbs. Huh. I work here. You remember? Oh, yes, yes, so you do. Uh, well, it's obvious. Why state a fact that's well known to me? I was just leading up. To what? Oh, something pretty radical and dramatic. Would you please come to the point? Good morning. Well, hereafter I'll say good morning. Yes, but not at 11.30, I hope. You know, I had no idea things were so bad here. Men are out of work. Something must be done about it. And you are going to do it? Well, to be brief, yes. Oh. Have you ever observed knowledge is power? Well, sight an instance. Well, um, take this cooperage. It's like a silkworm. A what? Now, a silkworm lays 500 eggs. So will this business. Huh. Yeah, but what about old man Ross? Have you forgotten him? Or is one setback enough for our hero? I may have my defects, Miss Tubbs, but forgetfulness is not among them. I never forget. You and the elephants. Yeah. Uh... Well, I consider this particular subject exhausted. We will now pass on to the next. Were you ever in love? Uh-uh. Well, supposing you saw a pretty girl walking down the street and the wind was blowing. Would you look at her face or her ankles? Now, let me understand this. The wind is blowing. Oh, perhaps I'd better put it in another way. Supposing you were on a train and a beautiful girl rushed madly into your arms and said that she was yours, all yours. What would you do? I'd ring for the porter. 
Mr. Bald, you belong in the Smithsonian Institute. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> Does Irene Lee know that? Uh, Irene Lee? Oh, <laughs> say, do you suppose Irene Lee ever kissed a man? Well, she's got the equipment and it doesn't look rusty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that shouldn't mean anything to you. Mm, uh, why? Stand up. <laughs> Aren't my eyes beautiful? Well, I... Isn't uh, my hair lovely? Well, I... Uh, haven't I a gorgeous figure? Uh, and don't oh, you oh Miss Oleander, this has gone far enough. In 1936, 1,232 divorces were caused by the allure of the devastating office wife. In some ways, I prefer Mr. Petty. He was 64, but he was vital. Made the days interesting. At least learned how to dodge. He's that? got it! He's got it! <laughs> Work all of a sudden. It did? Just as I was sitting on it. Oh, I knew he'd do it. If you hadn't bought this business right out from under my nose, by now I'd be manufacturing my father's barrels. Your father? Mister, nothing's ever been done about barrels. People seem content never to change. Do you know how many barrels are used in this country last year? 9,703. You don't say. Do you know the two main defects in the old-fashioned barrel? No, I don't. Neither do I, but let me tell you I got around them. How? Look at this. Just feel it. Oh, I see. Lighter barrels. And look again. A boy can do it. Now watch. <laughs> Works like magic. Ships flour, nails, taters, fluid. Do you know how much a beer maker spend in repairing barrels? No, I don't. Neither do I, but plenty. This new barrel will save them all that money. Shall we be partners? To whom shall we sell them? Anybody that wants them. I hold no prejudices. Do we do business or don't we? Well, I, uh, I... Should... Mister, how many freight cars would you have to hire to ship 5,000 empty barrels? I'm sure I can't say. Neither can I. Knock these down, and you can put 20,000 of them in one freight car. Think of the saving. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Shame. It's a deal. I mean, you understand each other perfectly. Sure. No chance of any misunderstanding. Oh, not that I'm aware of. Good. Then explain it to me. What is the deal? Uh, calculate, uh, we're satisfied, ain't we? Uh, for my part, I'm content. Then, uh, what's all the argument about? Well, I guess there isn't any. Do you like beer? No. Neither do I. Then we don't have to drink to our success. <laughs> Gosh, how's <I was> that, Matt? <laughs> think this is a bad idea. This is no time for half measures, Miss Tubbs. I shall not be long. I'm sure of that. I have something to show, Mr. Ross. Not so fast, my man. The tradesman's entrance is at the rear. It's most important that I see Mr. Ross immediately. People around here see Mr. Ross only when he sends for them. In that case, I shall establish a new custom. That's impossible. I know he won't see you. Uh, are you a mind reader? I can't say that I am. Well, then how do you know that he doesn't want to see me? What's going on, right here, Edward? A man can't have a nap even in his own house. Oh, it's you again. You must listen to me, Mr. Ross. Who says so? This is very important. I might even say that it is more important to you than it is to me. I... Uh, get that junk off of there. Do you want to scratch this desk? You don't know anything about barrels, do you? No. Well, it doesn't matter because there's never been anything like this before. Will you get out of here? Uh, I don't take any interest in these fool contraptions. Now, don't be hasty, Mr. Ross. How can you tell yet whether you're interested or not? There. Sorry. Now, see what you've done? You're not scratched it. This is no time to quibble over scratches. I want to show you what this barrel will do. Look at here. Uh, I'm stuck a little bit if I had a mallet. Uh, uh, oh, there's... I say I don't want a barrel. You wait till you see this one. Oh. Uh, sorry. Hey. So, honey. Hey, cut that out. Now, look at that. Isn't that the most compact barrel you ever saw in your life? Look at that. Isn't that... 
That's one of my best clubs. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't afford to be without this, Mr. Ross. You'd save so much in shipping that you could undersell all your competitors. And if you undersold everyone else, you could afford to operate and make a profit. Now, shall I draw you up an estimate? I don't want an estimate. I couldn't use enough barrels to make it worthwhile. I've always canned and jarred my product. Nobody uses barrels. If it was any good, somebody else would have snapped it up before this. Yeah. Are you considered a qualified authority on barrels? Listen, you. Please, you're interrupting. How many barrels do you anticipate using this season? I should say approximately none. None? If I must explain, young man, I'm selling out to the Mammoth Packing Company. And we won't be using any barrels either. Why? Because we're going to use the factory as a storehouse. Oh, but Mr. Ross, you can't do this. The whole community depends on your plant for its livelihood. I haven't any choice, young man. I can't afford to operate it. Yes, you can. All you have to do is use these barrels. They'll make you a fortune. Oh, that's certainly something off my mind. I suppose you can guarantee that. Why, surely. Everybody will be using them before long. Fine. But first you prove that they're practical. You go out and bring in some orders, and if you can show me how I can make a quarter of a million dollars using your barrels, I'll be very glad to keep my factory operating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross. I knew you'd see it my way. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, look out, stupid. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I... There. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. him all right. You did? How? Very simple. All we have to do is prove that our barrels will make him a quarter of a million dollars and then Mr. Ross will do the rest. Oh, simple as all that. A quarter of a million dollars, that's all. And Mr. Ross will do the rest. Uh -huh. Just a minute, Edison. Mm -hmm. Huh? What about my club? It's painfully obvious that you have very little information on manners. Possibly you've never read a book on the subject. But even with your limited knowledge, I should say that yours were inexcusable. I don't like your face. Oh, give two reasons and bound them. And you had better keep your ducky little mouth shut. Your eyes are too close together. Your nose is predatory. I should say that basically you are an untrustworthy person. Oh! You... you struck me. Must you brawl in the front yard? Oh, the yokel forgot his Sunday manners. Oh, come on, let's go. You're so young, make a lemon jealous. Did you ever hit a man? But, but I'm a man. You only think so because you own a pair of pants. She saw him strike me. Irene Lee? The Princess of Peckham Falls had a ringside seat. I was shamed before her. Well, what of it? Somehow it's worse to be shamed in front of a woman. Well, I'm a woman. Theoretically speaking, yes. You do say the cunningest things. You're so educational. I've been provoked and humiliated before, but this is the first time I've ever experienced rage. Now look out, you'll frighten yourself. But you know you're positively terrifying. Did it ever occur to you to sock him back? Why, no. I couldn't have done that to Andrews. That wouldn't fight him. Friends and neighbors, we've been patient long enough. We've lived on half rations, taken our jobs. Some of us have even gone on relief. What has Ross done about it? That's right, nothing. His place is practically closed down now. Are we going to wait until it closes completely? You're free men, ain't you? Well, why don't you act like free men? Why shouldn't we take over Ross's factory? We're willing to work. I have it on good authority that Ross is planning to sell out to the Mammoth Packing Company. And they'll use it for a storehouse. And then there won't be any jobs for anybody. We can run that factory without Ross or anybody else. What do you say, fellas? Are you with me? Just a minute, folks. Don't resort to violence when peaceful methods can be used so successfully. This man's ideas are run American. He, he will lead you into trouble. Who is that guy? Must be a friend of Ross. How about Ross selling out? I just left Mr. Ross and have interested him in keeping the factory open. Yeah! We've been getting promises for a long time. It seems that your only mission in life is to foment trouble. You spoke of taking over a factory. All right, take over mine. I've got to have help and you need the employment. That makes us partners.
We'll divide the work equally, share and share alike. You'll all be paid as the orders come in. Sounds good to me. Looks like it means all right. I'm sorry. When do we start? Now. Come on in. We wouldn't be interested in your barrels even if they had zippers on them. I simply have to sell them. Well, keep on trying. But not here. be something different. Letting the cat out of the barrel? <laughs> well, you might as well take it. It's no good to me. Put it right in there. Uh-oh. There you are, honey. <laughs> the young lady might be interested to know that up until now, birds, cats, and dogs were considered competent court witnesses in Sardinia. I'm sorry if I impress you that way. But uh, where did I return? Tell me. Just let me guess. <laughs> Pickle Falls. Pickle Falls. <laughs> Everywhere they said no. But you can't go on buying your own product forever, Oliver. Your money won't last. That's a fact I've already observed. And Jenkins, there's another fact I must face. What's that? You remember you advised me to go out and seek adventure and romance? Well, I seek them, but I'm no good at it. I'm a failure. But you're all wrong, Olive. You think I could get my old job back? If you admit failure now, you'll never overcome it. Go back. See it through. Fight it out. Something will happen. Do you know what the statistics on miracles are? No. They happen once every 300 years. Hello, Fred. Hello, Jim. Glad to see you. Just had a haircut and a sham. Gee, certainly slicked you up. I guess I can well afford the works. This man, Boggs, has got so many new orders, they're going to have to build a second plant. I didn't think it was possible. It certainly pep things up in this town. Are you going to celebration tonight? Oh, I wouldn't miss a funny thing. <laughs> Don't be so sure. It looks like rain. Let's 
to see you, Oliver. Welcome home. I can say is thanks from the bottom of my heart. Your reception moves me more than I've ever been moved in all my life. I only wish I was worthy of it. Thank you. What's the matter with Oliver? You shouldn't have done it. What's wrong, Oliver? Secretaries. What? Reception clerks. Who? Office boys, assistant buyers, purchasing agents. Well, what about them? They're like a barbed wire fence. You can't break through and you can't climb over. What are you talking about? You know, I always thought business was organized to encourage success. But it seems the whole system is dead set against any new ideas breaking through. But you succeeded. No. I'm afraid I'm like the barrels. Meaning what? I collapsed. What? Well, what about all those orders we received? Oh, I sent them in with my own money. Oliver! Oh, I just couldn't admit I was licked. I knew how much you and the others depended on me. Then this celebration was all for nothing. Mm-hmm. About time you were open up, I guess. We're not going to open up. We're going to close down until further notice. Who said so? What do you mean? Hey, you were singing a different song last night. Where's Bob? It ain't his fault if nobody wants barrels. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't get away with that stuff. We got dough coming and we're going to get it. He's right. We want our money. Money? I ain't got any. Hold it, fellas. Here he comes now. What is this, Mr. Bob? Why ain't we opening? Just a minute, fellas. Now, just a minute. I'll be right with you, too. Yeah, wait a minute. Trying to duck, huh? I am not, in your vernacular, trying to duck. I told you I didn't deserve that celebration last night. I didn't make good on the trip. That means Ross won't open up either. I'm sorry. I did my best. Yeah, that's what you say. Well, what about the dough we got coming right now? Now, listen, if you think I, we're told I, enough... I haven't got the money. As soon as I can get it, I'll pay every one of you. Now, maybe you'll listen to me. I told you all along I he's just been using us. Now that he's got a factory full of barrels, we're through. Do you hear that? Through! Well, you're not going to get away with it, see? You pay us off for tomorrow morning or else. And if you touch one barrel we've made to try to pull another fast one, you're going to get it. Yes. There, I guess that ought to hold him. Here, take a swig of this peach brandy. You need it. No, thanks. I don't drink. Oh, come on, wet your whistle. It'll clear your head. Cheer up, Oliver. Rome wasn't built in a day. The building of Rome took five centuries. Only half a million slaves were killed in its construction. Well, if you don't want any brandy, have a peach. No, thanks. It'll lion out that sour puss. I don't like peaches. They give me highs. But you like these. These were preserved in wood. What? That peaches keep better in barrels. That's one of my test barrels before I got it to work right. Keep better in barrels? That's what I said. Keep better in barrels. Uh -huh. I've got it. I've got it. A wonderful selling point. Everything keeps better in barrels. Hey! Uh, uh, have you got any more brandy? Hey. Uh, yes, and these little give me, barrels. Give me another one. Everything keeps better in brandy. Isn't yes, that wonderful? Not. Think of that. And all the time, I never thought of that. I'll be right back. Keeps better in barrels. It's what all right, Edward. I'm Mr. bringing Ross, Mr. Ross some peach brandy. Uh, I won't be a minute. Uh, here it is, Mr. Ross. A, a, a miracle of the modern industry. A pantry-sized collapsible barrel. I know. You told me all about it. Uh, but I missed the point last time. Other packers use jars. People throw them away. Manufacturers have to buy new ones. Think how simple it would be for the housewife to return this barrel collapsed. So what? The grocer could return 100 of these in less space than it would take for one case of jarred pickles. Sell pickles in barrels at no extra cost. 
Besides the saving, it would great novelty. Sounds it. And, and, and not only the same with other products. You will revolutionize the whole American business world. What cans did for beer and cellophane for cigarettes, you can do for pickles, prunes, plums, pears, all pineapple. Right. All right. And, uh, look here. Look here. Look right in there. Two years ago, these were packed in this barrel. Think of it. Aged in wood. I can see an advertising campaign that will electrify the whole country. Lights ring from a dozen skyscrapers stating the words, food in wood tastes very good. Food in wood tastes very good. Think of it. Taste it. You think I want to be poisoned? Poisoned? Why, it's nectar. It, it, here, taste it. Aging in the wood has improved its taste a thousand percent. Well, there is something. Have another drink. You have one. Here's another one. Pickles in wood are always good. Mm. Peaches and brandy, always dandy. Treat yourself from a barrel on the shelf. Uh, peaches in the wood, always better. Use the phone or send a letter. That's the one. That's the, I like that the best. Ah. Then you won't sell your pickle factory. Wouldn't think of it. Uh, just, just one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want the exclusive use of these barrels. You can't sell anybody else. I'll handle all you can make. More than 7,500 deals fell through in 1936 because the agreements were entirely verbal. Oh, you mean you want it in writing? If you please. Okay, by me. Hmm. It seems as though congratulations are in order. Tell me, how does it feel to be a successful inventor? Oh, I'm not the inventor. Angus Tubbs invented it. We're partners. Partners? Mm-hmm. We shook hands on it. Of course, the patents are in your name. No, I told you, Angus Tubbs invented it. I see. Mm. I guess that will do it. Yes. Thank you very much. The consignment to be delivered at my factory within 30 days. Morton P. Ross. You'll all go back to work next week. Meanwhile, Mr. Ross has advanced me money for operating expenses. If you'll fall in line over here, you'll all be paid for the work you've done. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ross. I knew you wouldn't understand. Good evening. Are you Mr. Tubbs, the inventor? No one else but. Oh, well, of course, I might have known. You know, you remind me of a portrait I once saw, of Edison. You don't say. I'm Dennis Andrews, attorney for the Mammoth Packing Products. I saw the model of your battle up at Mr. Ross's house. Thought I'd step down and look over your workshop. Look around. You know, there's something about an inventor's shop that fascinates me. Now make yourself at home. Really is wonderful. What a genius can do with a hammer and a couple of slats. You know, you have a wonderful invention here, Mr. Tubbs. <laughs> Pretty, ain't it? Mm, it's more than that. Within a year, this battle and your name should be known from coast to coast. That's if it's handled properly. And it'll take a big firm to do that. Say, mammoth packing products. We could put it over on a big scale. <laughs> I bet you could. How would you like to talk business with us? I can't. I've already made Oliver my partner. Besides, my daughter wouldn't like it. You see, uh, Oleander and Oliver <laughs> are kind of sweet on each other. Oh, I see. They're sweet on each other, are they? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, I always did appreciate sentiment, Mr. Tubbs. Perhaps we can work out something later. Huh? Maybe. As long as you've decided not to sell to us, to continue operating successfully, you should have the goodwill of your employees. Yeah? Well, just what do you suggest that I do? I understand that each year you give a big dance at the factory. Yeah? Wouldn't it be a good time to do it now? A sort of celebration. They'd like that. That would be perfect. A wise move. It would strengthen the community spirit. Well, I can't see why that would do any harm. Oh, it ought to be fun. If I were handling it, I'd go even further than that. Why don't you invite Boggs as your personal escort? He's got a soft spot for you anyway. Oliver Boggs and Irene? That's absurd. This man Boggs is the town hero. His coming to the dance with Irene would add that little democratic touch, so to speak. Why, I think it's a swell idea. Ah, uh, I don't suppose it could do me any good to argue if she thinks it would be a swell idea. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Oh, good morning.
morning. Is uh, Mr. Boggs in? Mr. Boggs? I'll call him. Did you call me, Miss Tubbs? Over there. Oh. Oh. It's you. Yes, I <laughs> suppose it is. <laughs> yes. I, um, really want to speak to you privately. Yeah, well, um... Haven't you a private office? Not yet. Oh. Remind me, Miss Tubbs, one of the first things we must have is a private office. Uh, very well, sir. I shall order one built immediately, sir, with soft music and special tea service. <laughs> The first mention of tea in England was in a letter from the East India Company, June 27, 1615. Really? <laughs> oh, won't you sit down, Miss Lee? Oh, excuse me, I... Perhaps Mr. Boggs will tell you some more interesting facts. I'm uh, sure I'll enjoy listening to him. <laughs> yes. I uh, hope I'm not in your way. Oh, never mind about me. I'm going over to the library. Read a book on etiquette for the office girl. Yeah. And uh, now, Miss Lee. My uncle is giving the annual community dance Wednesday night, and we'd like to know if you'd tell all your people. Why, of course. But my uh, special reason for being here is I'd like to know if you'd come as my guest. Will you? Oh, <laughs> will I? <laughs> yes, yeah, surely. And uh, as my escort? Of course. Then it's a date. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's awfully nice of you to ask me. I'll expect you at about uh, eight Wednesday night. Eight. <laughs> Is that all right? Oh, yes. Uh, um, uh, look, I mean, uh, Miss Lee, Saturday being the only night that the Motion Picture Palace is open, how would you like to go with me tonight? Well, I... Uh... Uh, they're showing the last installment uh, of Going Wild, and I'd like to see what happens to Quincy. Uh, Quincy? Uh-huh. Why, well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, look, you bring your car and I'll buy the tickets. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hi, Mr. Tubbs. How are you? Mighty fine, thank you. That's yeah, good. Oh, by the way, did you ever think over that idea of uh, doing business with us? I can't. I already have a partner. Partner? Oh, you mean Bob's. I wouldn't take him too seriously. He's doing mighty well as far as I can see. No, he's more interested in Irene Lee than in barrels. Irene Lee? Huh. What's she got to do with it? Mr. Tubbs, you know as well as I do that a man can't concentrate successfully on business and at the same time go chasing around with gals. I think you're talking through your hat. It appears to me that he's had an eye on Oleander ever since he hit town. That's what you think, but he's smart. And he'll play up to you and to your daughter until he gets a stranglehold on that invention. Why, he's seen everywhere with Irene Lee. I don't believe it. All right, you'll find out. Anyway, I'll see you later. So long. Better count your fingers, Angus. Gotta watch his step. Oh, forget it, Dad. But if that Cleopatra thinks she's gonna stick her claws into the guy I've staked out, 
She's due for a big surprise. Come on, Dad. You'll never regret this, Mr. Tubbs. Gosh, I hope I don't. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Miss Tubbs. Oh, you're learning. It seems that we're going to have quite a success. Look, do you think you're going to like this on a blue chiffon dress? Blue. Did you know of all the colors in the spectrum that blue was second in popularity? Bet you don't know what first is. Red. That's right. Does it get you? Get me what? I mean the color red. Does it make you feel funny? Does it make you think of stars and moonlight and glittering water? Does it make you feel you'd like to take a girl in your arms and, well, maybe kiss her? Theoretically speaking. Oh, well, if it's theoretical, skip it. Oh. Does this get you? Uh, I can't see your face. Oh, it's lucky I brought my needlework to keep me company. <laughs> Needles are made of steel. A pound of... I'll have to remember that. You know, it's little things like that that fill up a girl's life. Yeah. It ought to be a big night. Hmm? The community dance, oh. remember? Oh, to be sure. <laughs> You'll have a lot of things to celebrate. The factory starting and your own success. You haven't the slightest idea what that means to me. What? Uh, having become an imposing financial figure. Why? Well, for one thing, an imposing financial figure isn't knocked down. Oh, it goes back to that, does it? And for another, you can't seek a lady's hand without accomplishing some material success. Are you seeking a lady's hand? Thoughts are gathering in that direction. You couldn't hurry them a little, could you? Well, if I can perk up enough courage, I'll say them maybe tonight at the dance. Oh, then you are going. Oh, of course. I I'm going too, you know. Yes, I I I'm aware of that. Funny face. Uh, where's Bob? I wouldn't know. Why, you're drunk. Who, me? <laughs> Why, I never take a drink when I'm returning a barrel to a friend. Why is your religion with me? Hey, what are you doing tonight, Muzzy? Who, me? Yeah, you. What are you doing tonight? You know, something tells me that you'll never reach old age. Oh, who wants to? Many people do. I said, did you know that it was a fact that whales live 500 years, alligators 300 years, and elephants 100 years? No. Well, you know, the zoo would be glad to know that. Boom. <laughs> I should save this hat, Sam. It's just a thing for the dance. I don't know what you went to all that trouble for. It'll probably give you a headache. <laughs> Good evening. And how are you? Oh, fine. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, off to the dance. <laughs> yeah, off to the dance. This is an outrage. You can't use those racketeering tactics on me. I won't stand for it. You'll have to, Mr. Ross. I now control the patent rights of the battle. If you want to talk business, you'll have to talk it with me. Business? Larceny would be a better name for it. Your company would hear about this. Why mention my company? Why not make a deal between us? I'll never do business with a man who is crooked enough to sell out his own employer. There's plenty of money in it for both of us. I started this with Boggs. Why isn't he man enough to come here and face me himself? I can't speak for him. I'll wash my hands of the whole affair. That goes for you and that double-crossing Boggs. I'll close my plant down and I'll keep it closed. Mr. Ross, you have the whole town keyed up. 
-hmm. They're down there now, celebrating. Yeah. They're expecting you. Personally, I don't think you'll have the nerve to tell them. Oh, uh -huh. well, we'll see about that. And when I get through, they'll run you and Boggs out of this town. Think it over, Mr. Ross. You'll change your mind. At any rate, I'll be there. I never seen it to fail. This engine seems to know when we're going to a party. Well, now, Dad, don't you think that that... Go to your mother. Oh, here comes the car. Shall I flag it? It won't do no good. Could you give us a hand, Mr. Boggs? Uh, why, oh, but surely. we're already late for the dance. Well, a few more minutes won't hurt then. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? If I knew, would I be stopping here? Have you got plenty of gasoline? Certainly, before we left. Oh. I stalled along the this cause from not having gasoline. Now try it. I'll try it, but it won't do no good. Ninety-five percent of the road. Seventy-five percent of all cars without gas is caused from absent-mindedness. There. Now, try it again. Seventy-five percent? I still don't believe it. <laughs> well, it certainly took long enough. I'm sorry. I knew we shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> How many cylinders has this car? Eight. They're all here. Come here. Huh? That's gratitude for you, taking our gas. Typical of those kind of people. You needn't be afraid, I won't hurt you. Ross ain't showed up yet for his own party. Why worry about Ross? You'll be a millionaire yourself soon. <laughs> Starting to feel like one right now. <laughs> All right, so what? We're supposed to go back to work, ain't we? Well, when we do, I'll believe it. Rotten cake. When you were a kid, did you ever walk barefoot down the road? Huh? Will you please stop kicking up that dust? I'm sorry. You're none too soon, Myrtle. Just as soon as Mr. Boggs gets here, we're going to have the Grand March. He ain't here yet. No. We left him down the road with Irene Lee. You mean they were parked? You think I'm a gossip? I started out this evening to go to a dance. You should have told me to bring my hiking boots. Well, they sort of needed help. Oh, they got it all right. Take it easy, Dad. We're all out of liniment. Just like I figured. Oliver ain't showed up yet. Looks like he ain't very anxious for our company. Dad, would you mind dancing on my other foot for a while? Well, I... Might dance on both of them. <laughs> the next time you turn Good Samaritan, do it alone. It's too hard on my feet. Why, Miss Lee, you act just like you were angry at me. Oh, skip it. It serves me right. I let myself in for it. Let yourself in for what? I came along for the laughs. All I want to do is get to the dance, take my bow, and leave. Oh, we can't do that. We should stay on with the rest of the folks. <laughs> Not we, you. Oh, I don't understand. You asked me to be your escort. Sure. That was just a gesture on my part. Gesture? Certainly. That little touch which proves to the natives the Ross family is not ritzy. Then you didn't want to spend the evening with me? My little angel of mercy? Definitely no. I see.
Hey, what did I tell you, smart guy? If everything's in the bag, why don't Ross and Boggs show up? It's too hot in here. There'll be a lot of people faint. And I told him everything would be all right. Mr. Ross is here now. Mr. Ross is here now. Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross. How about a speech, Mr. Ross? Hello, Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross. Hey. I'm very glad to see you. Now then, we are hoping, Mr. Ross, that you will say a few words. They're on the tip of my tongue. I know what my plant means to all of you, and I know what this celebration entails. But I'm reluctant to tell you that we cannot continue in the spirit in which this party is being given. And hey, what do you mean? I'm sorry to tell you that I'm closing my plant down completely. No man can hijack me out of my business and get away with it. Hey, what are you talking? What's this all about? You mean the factory won't open? You can't do that to us. Hey, you can't get away with that. This whole scheme was trumped up by Oliver Boggs. He made an agreement with me and then sold me out. But I can't believe that. If Boggs isn't guilty, why isn't he here to answer for himself? Yeah, where is Boggs? Where can we find him? Isn't he coming? Just like I told you, men. Lay the whole thing at Boggs's door. I was willing to keep my bargain, but he has made that impossible. Let's get Boggs. Yes, yeah, sell us out, Willie. What did you have to do with this? Well, uh, Mr. Andrews promised me that everything will be all right. Did you make a deal with him? Seems I did. So what did Oliver have to do with it? Nothing. It's just a deal between Mr. Andrews and me. And you dragged Oliver's name into it. Hey, there he is now. What'll it be, men? Let him have it. Get him the work. He's got it coming to him. I never did like strangers. Hey, you, you're coming with us. Huh? Where to? What have I done? Don't stall, you double-crosser. You sold us out, and now Ross is pulled down altogether. Oh. Is that true? Don't pretend. You know very well you sold out that barrel and ventured Andrews in order to hold me up. Oh, I, I couldn't have done that. I don't own it. No, I don't believe him. Mere talk. Yeah, let's get him out of here. No, no, let go of him. He didn't have anything to do with it. It was my father who sold out to Andrews. But your father had no right to sell either. Stop throwing riddles at us and make yourself clear. And in a hurry, too. Well, you, you all know that Mr. Tubbs is a little eccentric. <laughs> eh? I, I'm what? Well, you know, kind of vague at times. So while I'm on my trip, I stop off at Washington and register the patents in Oleander's name. You, you mean the patents belong to me? They're all yours, and you can do what you please with them. All right, then. We'll clear this up now. If you're agreeable, Mr. Ross, the deal is still on. Hey, let everybody out. Now, don't do anything until you see me. Quiet, you shut up. We go to work Monday morning. Andrews promise you the Brooklyn Bridge. No, he didn't say anything about a bridge. Hope I wasn't too long. Just a minute, Andrews. Not so long ago, you deprived me of my self-respect. Good work, Rob. Get out of that car, young lady. Barbarian, why don't you whistle like a tea kettle so people will know when you're boiling? Before I leave town, Miss Lee, I am compelled to inform you that you're not as nice as you look. There are over 10,000 institutions of higher learning in this country. I feel it would be well if you were to attend one until you grew up. Uh, may I suggest Yale? It's lots of fun. Who is this eruption? I was taking no chances. at your service, sir. You don't look like any chemical company I ever saw. Oh, I'm not. I'm Bob DeBrat. A chemical trust company is my girl's father. Good likeness, too, don't you think? Hey, Bob! Hey, I've been looking everywhere for you. Say, I got thousands and thousands of orders for barrel. My girl's father likes them. He took Lucille's cat out of the barrel. Remember? You tell Oleander about it because I won't be here. Hey, what's all this nonsense about your leaving town? I feel that my uh, mission in Peckham Falls has been fulfilled. My presence is no longer necessary. Necessary? Indispensable, I should say. I can use... Oh, there, not so fast. I saw him first. According to the law of supply and demand, the highest bidder always... My bid's been in for some time. Good night, Mr. Ross. 
Good night. Hey, Pop, wait for me. I want to tell you some more about Yale. Hey, ha! this will kill you. <laughs> Very pretty dress, Oleander. Well, it's a fine time to be noticing it. You look very pretty, too. Do you know that 90% of all men suffer from myopic astigmatism? Oliver, what are you trying to tell me? Well, that love is blind. Well, did you know that over 99% of married men are controlled by their wives? No, oh, I didn't know that. Well, you will soon. Oh. Oh. Oh.